son street street guys. The average citizen in Georgia ain't really is is just like anybody else, man. They can't they can't handle these situations. And take a look at this video here. And these alarming actions, uh, why some people call him Machete Man. And lately, he's the reason, he's been the reason that behind safety Samurai. concerns in Atlanta's Kirkwood community, a community that's known for being edgy. This and is the same neighborhood, Kirkwood. As the, as, this is the same exact neighborhood that the previous story happened in. Kirkwood. And take a look at this video here. And these alarming actions, uh, why some people call him Machete Man. And lately, He's the reason he's been the reason behind safety concerns in Atlanta's Kirkwood community, a community that's known for being edgy and having sort of a small town feel. But residents say their tolerance of being tested. Some business owners edgy and having a small town feel. That was, a good, that was a good pun she did there. That means that this this is a glider made yeah. for Kirkwood. That looked like bro from uh, Snow on the Bluff. <laughs> So yeah, but you, to, he's, he's like, fighting them demons. Sounds like they voted for this too, though. Exactly. Salute to um Dilbert Gag. He says, G.I. Joe Daryl Brooks denies valid constitution but demands constitutional right to come. Oh, you see, that's that's he said David Brooks Brooks basically demanded lynch mob instead of Wisconsin courts. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So this is he's talking to somebody else. Yeah, salute to you, Dilbert Gag. But um, yeah. Um, I'm not sure that uh, being disemboweled by a sagging sun man is what these quirky gliders had in mind when they oh, went to this quirky neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, but but at the same time, and and, and I got to get the demographics on Kirkwood, man. But at the same time, this is part of it because he wouldn't do this in a sun neighborhood. This guy would have been dead a long time ago. This oh, guy, yeah. I'm not talking about like fucking pookie to the 10th power triple og but this guy just going in the black neighborhood waving the samurai so some little sun team would have been peeled his cap been knocked his block off community oh, that's known for being over. edgy and having sort of a small town feel but residents say their tolerance of being tested some business owners say <laughs> the man is scaring off customers the fox 5 i team saying foul is looking into this for us this morning dana is here dana what have you learned about this man why he's doing this then the impact in the community well this story has so many layers hey, but let's start with the fact that he has knives all sorts of knives and he he wields them in the front yard he does it out what's up 51 percent that's that's a lot. For Atlanta, that's a hell of a lot. That's Out a, in the that's street and a, a nearby that's salon. a gentrifying neighborhood. It's in the process of gentrifying. That's what that is. Yeah, but the area where this guy is is probably a hundred percent black knives and he he wields them in the front yard. He does it out in the street. And a nearby salon owner, really right next door, says it's frightening her customers. And the threats they've told police have escalated. I pass him and I immediately get alarmed. Salon owner Kelsey Womack remembers the first time a knife wielding man showed up on this block in this Kirkwood neighborhood. Came back to the business, tried to warn all the clients and the staff that there was somebody out there who didn't look sane, whichever with the weapon. And however it looked, well, it didn't add up to breaking the law. I wonder if she told him what color the person was when she came into her establishment saying there's somebody out there that doesn't look safe. Can um, somebody, how how does it look that, like? How is that not breaking the law? Well, they vote. Listen, I told like like you said, they voted for this to not because you gotta understand, they decriminalized a lot of shit in Georgia that a lot of people don't understand, especially Atlanta. They decriminalized a lot of shit. After um, George Floyd died, and especially after Rashad Brooks, they 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 took a fucking red ink pen to their fucking law books and just decriminalized a lot of shit. This is not well. A and after Ahmaud Arbery died, because that was state law in Georgia that got got, got revoked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they 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 they've been chipping away at their shit for for a couple of years now, heavy. So like, um, yeah, this this is this is look. This, this nobody can do anything. Oh, 
Atlanta police neighbors say have been called repeatedly since he moved in over the summer next door to the hair salon and to a candy shop. We'd have a guy out there with swords and machetes and everything else. That guy is Brandon Barkley, who the Fox 5 I team caught up with on the phone. Hi, is this Brandon Barkley? He said his daily routine of swinging knives around is a religious routine, nothing more. You're a passionate person who talks about God. But he was threatening to hurt my clients if they he parked in front the of the house. He and yells about God, He's he accused of being a. He said, he's he's out there talking about that. Listen, man, he would be dead in the Sun neighborhood, man. He could this be uh, be practicing Efa because he's wearing all white. I don't know, but you never heard of that. Huh? People, threatening people and waving swords. Or or an um, burrito neighborhood, man. Yeah, well, burritos oh, yeah. like knives, so they and they know how to use them, so they definitely fuck him up. He wouldn't do this in a no burrito neighborhood. He wouldn't do this because he's doing this in a glider neighborhood because he knows he can get away with it. He wouldn't do this in no burrito neighborhood. Salute to Deluxe Two Four Seven, man, coming through. He's also neighborhood. doing it for attention. Well, he's a real ninja, that's for sure. I don't, I don't think it's attention. I think he just wants to, uh, the yeah, to, dominance. He's, 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 he's like, he's, he's, he's showing his dominance and he's showing his, um, he's marking his territory and he's like, she, she's stunting. He's stunting on y'all. That's basically he's, um, he, he, he's, um, you know, just throwing it in y'all face like y'all. Uh, I'm a son man and you can't do shit to me. It's routine, nothing more. You're a passionate person who talks about God. Uh, he was threatening to hurt my clients if they parked in front of the house that he didn't rightfully own. He's accused of being a squatter by Invitation Homes Management. They told Atlanta police they own the house on Hosea Williams Drive, not him. Invitation Homes filed to a victim in July, but the pandemic has slowed the process. In a counterclaim, Mr. Barkley said he's owed $5,000 from a couple he thought owned the home, but never brought him the lease. APD concluded it's a civil matter. The Kirkwood man. That's a civil matter, man. But what him, but. And the eviction can, moratorium helped that long. And I'll give you to that. that. That may be a civil matter, blah, blah, blah. We'll give you that. But the other shit he's doing is not a civil matter. The Kirkwood man told the Fox 5 I team he actually bought the house, paid cash to the same couple. Who's dumb enough to believe that? Who's I mean, dumb enough to works. believe that he paid somebody $5,000 for this house? Even uh, if he paid $5,000 for <laughs> it's not enough for money. a house. <laughs> who's, who's, who's dumb, who's dumb, dumb enough to The, the chat said he he's a squatter with a hard R. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, but if, but if that lie works and he actually is successful in getting the house, you got to admit, that's that's a smart hustle. No, that, that lie's not working. That lie's just prolonging it. That lie's just not, like, like he's got his squatter rights, and he's just telling them that, and they're like, all right, well, it's a civil matter. They're not saying they believe that shit. They're just saying, all right, well, he said that, so it's a civil matter. You got to you gotta come here with some guys with some baseball bats and fucking break his legs and carry his ass out of here. That's the only way you're getting him out of here. How much did you give them? You gave them $20,000? He said he didn't have any paperwork to prove it, and the number he gave us for this couple, well, it's disconnected. Next door business owner, Kelsey Womack says, she's not concerned with who owns the home, but with how the person living there is behaving. It's caused us to lose money. It's caused us to lose business. Then there was the tipping point. Caught on the business surveillance camera, the machete man, well, he was carrying a new weapon. He told passersby it was a stun gun. He was shocking the taser, however it works, and the client who's outside just said, you know, do not come near me with that taser. Then 33-year-old Brandon Barkley pulled out something that callers to 911 believed was a gun. August 9th. Something that callers to 911, they're giving him the benefit of the doubt. Something that callers to 911 believe was a gun. Really? <laughs> yeah, That's this reporter is a fucking nightmare. That but yeah, but she's callers tonight. She's and on one belief. This is what I'm saying. Like you can't. You, even you, if it is fake, he's pretending to cock it. So 
Yeah, but it's who, who, who that's real. If he pulled that on the cop, he'd be dead. If he pulled that on Jamar Quavius and um goddamn um Daviante and shit, his ass would be full with more bullet holes than a motherfucker. And so would every other house in the neighborhood. <laughs> Yeah, there'd be three dead toddlers, fucking blown out tires, shot out windows for yeah. six blocks. He probably would, wouldn't have hit him, though. Yeah, he would have survived. Yeah, he, he would survive. Some, some Mexican <laughs> would be stiff in his grandma's kitchen. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's some shots would get let off. If he, if he did that to one of them, some shots would get let off. Somebody would die. But yeah, this is this is this is this is uh, this this is unreal, man. I I, I and I covered this a year ago. This happened a year ago, but I just want to show you, like y'all thinking, oh Georgia and Georgia, man, they ain't going for that, sh-. man. Listen, <laughs> said man, run, we run. Yeah, shit, but man. this is Atlanta, though. I this is Wakanda. Yeah, we we run shit, man. Do not come near me with that taser. Then, thirty-three-year-old Brandon Barkley pulled out something that callers to nine one one believed was a gun. August 19th, Atlanta police finally arrested him. He was charged with aggravated assault, a felony. Invitation Homes changed the front door lock, put up a no trespassing notice, but relief was short-lived. Days later, Brandon Barkley, still holding a key to the back door, he said, was out on bond, back in the home with knives out. That you see- <sighs> out on bond. Back at the home with knives out. You can't do nothing with it. Y'all have y'all have fucked yourselves, man. I don't know how you unfuck yourself out of this one, man. It's gonna be hard, to, y'all. It's going to be interesting to see how you glide. Because gliders are smart. I give you that thing. You guys, you gliders are very smart. Plus, he, this he wasn't this smart because he because he didn't change the back door lock. No, they no, no. Got no. him for B and A, B and E. If they would have done that. No, 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 no. He said that he had the back door key. That's just what he's saying, how he got back in there. That's his version of it. This guy's a fucking liar. What I'm saying is... It, Ock, there would be evidence if he if he had broken and entered. What, what, what do you mean? How do you know there's not no evidence? They can't do shit to this guy. This guy can do whatever the fuck he so wants. So you don't, you don't think the homeowners called the cops? He, they, they said they, they did, and they, they told him did. it was a civil matter. It's no, a, that was it's, it's an absentee, that was the it's first an absentee time. owner. They're not around. They It's like a bank or it's a real estate company that owns it. So they're not around all the time. I mean, yeah. they were able to put, they were able to, to padlock the front door and, and put up a, a no trespass, trespassing notice, but they're not around all the time. Yeah, and they just said the front door. Not the back door. Let me, let me play. The let one me he play. said he had to keep. 911 believed was a gun. August 19th, Atlanta police finally arrested him. He was charged with aggravated assault, a felony. Invitation homes changed the front door lock, put up a no mm. trespassing notice. But relief mm. was short-lived. Days later, Brandon Barkley, still holding a key to the back door, he said, was out on bond. Back in- I don't think he ever had keys, though. That's what I'm trying to say, man. Like keys? What the fuck? Key? He just I don't think where do you get keys from? Period. Yeah, I don't think he did either. You install your own lock. I don't think he even put that much effort in. I think he nah, he broke a window that. and walked through that bitch. Yeah. That's, yeah that's, he don't really look like the lock installing type. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I mean, man, that does I get where you're coming from. You're thinking like a glider. But this guy, I bet there's dishes everywhere. I bet it's fucking the toilet stopped up. I bet that place is a mess on the inside. He definitely still in power home. from the neighbors. Yeah. With knives out. But you say you own the home, you have keys, and part of your performance with the knives in the yard is because you're becoming an angel. Okay, gotcha. I don't want anything to happen to him, but he's terrorizing my clients. You don't want anything to happen to him. This guy's put you through fucking hell and he destroyed your business she voted for it for sure she voted yeah, twice is, for it this is the this is the problem solving ability of a glider woman <laughs> he don't touch him but i don't like it <laughs> she didn't say she doesn't want certain things to happen to him 
She she's she more likely to date him than she is to fucking <laughs> do anything about the fucking cop. I bet you he just smash. I bet he just smash. I mean, like that's that's so true though. He, he probably could, did smash. Not he could. He did. He could probably go over there and talk her out of her draws. He probably doing it now. I right? the sob story about how he grew up or some shit. I bet he could. Wow, that's probably he could probably hit that. Your performance with the knives in the yard is because you're becoming an angel. Okay, gotcha. I don't want anything to happen to him, but he's terrorizing my clients. You know, now Kelsey Womack says she's afraid he perhaps might. You, you know, there has to be a study done because 20 years ago, 20 years ago, you know, if, if that guy would have walked through like Carroll Gardens in Brooklyn, which was an Italian neighborhood, all mafia, he would have been met, met by 20 guys with baseball bats. And it would, it, and he, or he wouldn't have even tried it because he would have known that was that's what, was what I'm saying. That's yeah. the point. He wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have gone through Bensonhurst or nothing like that. No, nope. or, or Howard Beach. He would have never done anything like that. So that's the be, point. What happened? What happened? <laughs> well, you've been the last three years. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying what happened. The, the, you, the, you, know, you should tell us. You're the glider. You tell us. What happened, man? It's like crazy. Well, you tell us. Talking talking man. If that's you're talking I, mob, Boston. if you're talking mob, that's a threat to the state's control. So they go after the mob. They don't go after... You know, sun criminals because they're not a threat to control. Well, no, they no, are I'm, not, I'm not talking, about, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that that all the, like in, I know in New York, all those guys left town, and all you have left over are are transplants. You know, like Gen Z transplants who thinks think that the the crime and the violence is part of the show. You know, and 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 it doesn't happen to them. You know, it doesn't have the thing about crime is. It's not happening to a person all the time. It happens you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know, and, and one person. So everybody else walks around and they say, oh, there's no crime. It didn't happen to me, you know, and that's what's going on here. But that, that's, cra I mean, it's just crazy <laughs> to me. Hey, would you, would you say, man, that, that how you were describing, the, uh, you know, in, Bro in Brooklyn and certain parts of Queens and stuff, as far as like the Italians and the mob and stuff, checking them? Would you say that that is still accurate in uh in Boston now, or like because uh Ak was saying that he thinks that those are like really tough white people? Do you think that I, they're like still like that now? I don't know, but I don't know. You mean you talk about Boston? I don't know Boston, yeah. But but uh, I, I mean I don't know that place. But I'm just saying that here uh -huh. here in here in New York, I mean I've been hearing about crazy stuff happening like in Middle Village. That's like a mafia neighborhood. I mean Staten Island. <laughs> You know, yeah, I mean, look, listen, well, Italians don't run, run New York no more. So, well, they never did run New York. They run their neighborhoods. But here's the thing. We run like you can't you can't do anything to us. The Now that the police and the criminal justice system can't do anything to us. Um, it, it, I just I'm just interested in how gliders are going to turn this off because they problem solve. Gliders are problem solvers by nature. At least the smart ones are. The smart gliders are problem solvers by nature. They saw they left and they're leaving in uh, mass. Yeah, like build a space station and go live there. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, all the New Yorkers went to Florida, man. You got to fix this, though, man. It's up to y'all, man. We I challenged the wrong person on the corner and get guys. hurt himself. <laughs> I talked to Mr. Brantley's mother and asked if there were any mental health issues, and she said, absolutely not. None. He says there are none as well. You see? This guy's, there's no mental health issues. This guy's not mentally ill. He's just doing this because he knows he can. ...on the corner and get hurt himself. I talked to Mr. Brantley's mother and asked if there were any mental health issues. And she said, absolutely not. None. He says there are none as well. His mother just says he's, quote, really into God. And she backs up his story that he gave $20,000 to a couple to own the home. <clears throat> Portia? So invitations homes, they are moving forward with the eviction uh, process. Or where does this stand there? 
Yeah, I mean, they've been trying since July. We've seen the records on that. But there's been, you know, a moratorium on evictions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even for those cases that could go forward, and this is backed up. I mean, there's a backlog there. The moratorium ended officially at the end of the month. So they're hoping to get in the queue to go ahead and legally ask him to move along. All right. Disturbing scenario there. Hopefully this is just resolved easily and get some answers. Yeah.